you're reading that correctly, folks. The fear and greed index coming out of CNN. Oh my God, finally hit the extreme. And that's probably because your grandmother's terrified of her retirement. The neighbor's kid that wanted to own a Lambo before. He was 20 years old, flipping them NFTs and crypto projects. Now has absolutely no liquidity and shitting his pants with all of his money locked up in, in Celsius right now. So yes, let's go over some stuff. Let's talk about some stocks, what I'm doing, how I'm doing, baby, as we head into this long weekend here in Canada. But there's no surprise that the S&P 500 is on track for the worst first six months in a decade here, folks. And the reason they're saying that is because we haven't seen such a dramatic, consistent drop pretty much in any historical crash outside of the March 2020 crash, right? And as I mentioned, usually this is going to happen to the inverse side as well, because we're seeing things kind of the volatility compact tighter and tighter over the past crashes like the dot com or the 2008 financial crisis. I'm promising you, or at least I'm speculating that once this thing bottoms, once the fear, once the inflation insanity and those conversations finally go past us in greed and people being like, oh, you know, there's good discounts out there. We'll start seeing it come back probably just as aggressively as it's been going down. But with the S&P down 20%, I'd arguably say that's not that bad right now, right? The NASDAQ, probably a little worse, down 30%. If that goes farther, it's going to be really painful. The TSX, the Canadian composite side of the border here, down 11.22%. I'm still buying into some of these uh, TS or the TSX composite. I'm, I've got my indexes there. I'm buying. But Bitcoin, another thing miserably continuing to crash, dead, flirting with the $18,000 range here. Guys, I picked some more Bitcoin up this morning, the gambler inside. I'm only 150 bucks. I mean, we're not talking about walking up to a roulette table and just plopping it all on red here. I'm still long-term bullish on this as liquidity dries up and all of that that leverage finally evades the market, but it's hard to tell how much of it is leverage evaporating and people just shorting Bitcoin right now. Because as mentioned, guys, people go where the money goes. We're all a bunch of lemmings. We just follow each other off a cliff. And that cliff right now is you make money shorting and that's what the market's doing. So eventually the shorts will dry up, which should also offer some more cushioning back to the upside. But gold, silver, I talked about this yesterday, man. Both of these assets are not acting as an inflation hedge like they have historically in the past. No idea why why lots of reasons these are some of the most i think manipulated markets that exist they're not nearly as pure as they used to be you know pure precious metals um all of the precious metal stocks, Barrick Gold, some of the largest are crashing miserably alongside it. No idea why. Uh, very intriguing stuff. But what is crashing that is going to bode very well for you into the near-term future is commodities. Uh, taking a look at, uh, just take a look at this. I mean, lumber's falling off a cliff here, guys. Taking a look at gasoline, the thing that affects us on a daily basis is finally dropping pretty dramatically. Natural gas for heating your home dropped dramatically, like crashed miserably from the nine to fives, almost a 50% drop. My God, that's absolutely insane. Wheat, you know, affecting some of the global food supply that's crashing off a cliff right now steel uh iron ore lumber all of these things have retraced dramatically from their all-time highs i'm hoping this is going to start baking into the inflation data even though rents are going up right now which probably raise it a little bit but nonetheless i'm hoping i'm hoping we've seen the peak of inflation because the s p 500 is going through a uh, value reset guys for those of you that don't understand the price to earnings multiple a pe just basically means what for every one dollar i put in when can i expect a return based off the s p 500's total earnings for a year and when it says that it's sitting at a 19 pe that means it would take 19 years to double your one dollar but we have to understand and that the earnings historically have been a lot higher because of the technological revolution with things like Apple, with things like Microsoft, right? And I would be highly fixated on these companies because at the end of next month, we are going to be get the earnings report that will dictate whether we go a leg up or a leg down. If earnings come in okay, it's going to obviously ab 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 absolve a lot of the fears coming into all. Obviously, I'm thinking the inflation data is starting to cool off. Those two things combined together could start pushing us back higher. But obviously, you know, when we're talking about the global integration thing, like Amazon have on the economy, if these things are slowing down, we're definitely going to see it in the next earnings. I know Kevin O'Leary's running around saying, oh, my businesses are making more money and busier than ever, but that doesn't mean the conglomerates that really have the true impact on the global scale um, are going to be getting by just as cleanly. Somebody's in trouble right now. Somebody huge, over levered probably. We don't know who they are. But if you look back at great bottoms, it's always on a day of absolute chaos because somebody goes to zero. I want that. I'd like to sacrifice somebody, not me, of course, but somebody, and I'm not levered, 
but somebody out there is, and they're going to zero, and that will be our bottom. So time will truly tell here, but it'll be neat to find out, right? Whereas things like Johnson & Johnson, Exxon Mobil, I, I, these things are hard to say if you want to own them, right? Because Johnson & Johnson trades for a higher PE than Apple does right now, and I just, they do not have the same earnings capability, yet they're sitting at year-to-date green, right? And I know a lot of dividend investors have been finding these as a place of solace. They're like, oh, I'm just going to keep stocking money here. It's green. It's doing okay. But arguably, I'd say you want to be playing around in the area where people are just terrified right now. And obviously, the REITs can be one major segment of that. Uh, real estate, some of the stuff my parents are personally dealing with, they're seeing some of the calamity in the real estate market. And REITs obviously having to refix their leases when those mortgages come due and they have to readjust the interest rates. That's what a lot of people are fearful of REITs, but I think they've overcorrected. And inevitably, you know, the Fed's going to become accommodative as soon as the interest rates uh, or as soon as inflation slows down, interest rate hikes will start to tamper off as well. So I think REITs are largely going to overcorrect. Now, it, Rio Can's actually been doing fabulous through this, but the ones that I would want to pay most attention to are some of those medical REITs, uh, something like a Stag Industrial, which is down 33% year to date. MPW, there's a Canadian counterpart called Northwest Health Properties. If you're into dividend investing, Forget your J&Js of the world because yields are going to get absolutely absurd here. And so long as you can understand the company's income cash flow, it'll really dictate on the reliability of these really high yields. I mean, I've been paying attention to things like Starbucks still, which I think could be at a fabulous discount here. A lot of great companies out there, right? So this is kind of where the markets are headed into the weekend. And I think it's important just to take a broader overview as well before I slim out here. Let's just take a look at my watch list uh, for going into the long weekend here in Canada. Canada, they're going to go watch some fireworks. Forget about the insanity, but just take a look at this, guys. Just another day of red uh, across the board. It doesn't matter what you're buying. Unless you were all in oil stocks and healthcare stocks, you're probably pretty devastated at this point. And I want to know exactly what you guys are doing to get through this. Because for me, this is just the best buying opportunity of a lifetime. Cost average into the shit every single day of the week that you can. Sell your sell your grandmother's shoes if you have to. I, I Sell your bed. Sell anything you can. Get rid of it all. Just keep buying here. Um, obviously, people are going to continue to try and pressure fear onto you. But the problem right now is... Guys, when this stuff starts to come back, a five or an extra 10% of the downside over the next five or 10 years, when we could see another doubling of the market from here, you just, it, who cares how much realistically lower we're going to go? Because it's just, I can't see it being as bad <clears throat> as the entire world is making it out to be right now. There just needs to be an unwinding of leverage. And once the leverage is unwound, the market is reset, which is a very healthy thing to do things will start coming back and you're going to want to be getting the deals you're getting now. If Bitcoin was worth buying at 50K, it sure as hell worth buying at 19. If the S&P 500 was worth buying at the, the upper $400 range, it's got to be good buying at the 350 range, right? I mean, you just got to continue to take advantage of this while the opportunity persists because I'm promising you once this insane fear, this conversation of inflation, this real estate bubble and all this finally subsides, we are going to be going back into a new bull market and you just don't want to be sidelined missing the initial bumps um, because it's going to definitely recover your portfolio. But I want to know what you think about all of this in that comment section below. Stay cool, stay awesome. And as always, I look forward to catching you in the next one.